Welcome to another edition of The Real Money Show. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm Vice President of Guildhall Wealth. Joining me is Jerry Karaya. He is our e-store manager, senior broker, uh, overall uh, analyst in the market, and uh, also very good with FX and uh, cryptos, knows a lot about that. So we're going to be talking with him. Also joining us on the show is Tracy Clark. Uh, she has a network of over 100,000 people, and she teaches people how to transform their lives, empower them. And we're going to be talking about sort of repatterning our thought processes and how that uh, applies to precious metals. It's going to be a great discussion. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Jerry, is it just me or has it been an absolutely crazy week? It has been, Jeremy. It's been so busy. Great to be back on the show. Just want to say welcome to all of our listeners once again. Thank you for your continued loyalty. And especially just want to give a, give a quick hello to all of the new, the new investors this week who got on board. Welcome to the precious metals market. We look forward to helping you out even further. Do you think a lot of it has to do with the impending... Uh, uh, anxiety with the election coming up? I think so. I mean, anxiety for everyone is at like critical highs and everyone, uh, I'm sure Tracy can even attest, attest to this, everyone's kind of looking for a channel out and this is just one way of, of you know, easing that pressure. We look at our finances and the uncertainties there are evident so precious metals is just an obvious choice to kind of gravitate towards. So, yeah, it's just one way of alleviating, alleviating, excuse me, the the anxiety levels. Yeah, and you know, in terms of the pricing in the market, um, we've seen some recent highs uh, earlier um, in the summer. Things have been definitely consolidating for the last several months. Um, we're often talking with people about the the bottom here in the market and how it can't really go much lower than this. Um, so for someone who was looking for a better buying opportunity, right? Let's take silver, for instance, it's trading, I don't know, in the $23, $24 range. Um, what would you say to someone who's saying, well, I think I'm going to wait. I think I might get a much better opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Well, we, I think it's important to know why metals move in the first place. And we have to keep our perspective on the correlations, gold and silver historically are negatively correlated to the US dollar. And we see the trend in the US dollar pointing downwards. Why? Well, there's two keys. They're not raising interest rates for another four years. On top of that, and including all central banks, we're on a race to print as much currency as possible to stimulate to keep the boat up. Those are the two drivers. So, as we know, they're printing currencies, gold and silver will react and react to the top side as it will continue to do so if we look at the top side growth of the central bank asset growth in Canada. It's, it's astronomical. It's a stunning chart. Uh, we put it in the newsletter last week. Yeah, I think, you know, talking about fundamentals, the fundamentals are clear in terms of if, as long as the central bank is printing money, it's pretty clear the direction of where the metals are going to go because the, the currency is devaluing. I look at it as well from the, the perspective of the, the wholesale retail market and supply demand. There's not enough physical product out there. I mean, you can barely find maples anywhere. 10 ounce RCM bars are really tough to find. Even, even one ounce gold bars, you can't bring in enough quantity. So we're bringing in other LBMA approved products. And the fact that there's this lack of physical product, which has raised premiums, mm -hmm. means how can the price go down? If the price goes down on paper, even if it did, the physical price, they're just going to raise those premiums higher. So you can see just from uh, the actual real world physical market, mm -hmm. high premiums means the paper price is undervalued. That's right. And just knowing that it's so difficult for us to replenish whenever we do um, sell gold or silver out the door, that replenishing that is a huge unknown for us. Right. So normally, as our listeners know throughout the years, we've never been about high pressure and get in the market now. Um, you know, maybe take your time and, and stagger into this market it used to be kind of the play. But ever since this year, um, not so much. Uh, just knowing that there is these uncertainties about the, the physical market being available, uh, I'm encouraging my clients, especially today, to 
think about um, you know going large into the market. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. And speaking of just different times, different feel. Let's bring Tra uh, Reverend Tracy Clark into the discussion here. Um, she's, to me, she's a, a great client, but I also consider one of these clients that we have a lot of that are also a friend. You know, so we'll have chats on the phone. We're just chatting, 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 and and an hour goes by, and we're both we're both very busy. Um, Tracy, how you doing? I'm fabulous. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me today. You know, Hi, Tracy. it's funny listening. Hi, Jerry, to what you said about emotions right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, people are reacting to emotions. And when I'm always talking with people, gold and silver, and, and getting into that space, most people follow the masses. And it's going to be too late. And, you know, when you look at people's emotions, they'll wait to see if they fit. They'll wait to see what everybody else is doing. And what I always say when I look at gold and silver, and I know I've had this conversation with you, you, Jeremy, a lot, is you can't wait right now because we're in these unprecedented times. And so the emotions, people are going to wait till they're afraid. Then they're going to look at precious metals, and then they have to get educated. And that's a really difficult space to be in. You don't, you don't really want to get there. But I see this a lot when, pe when things are changing in the world and our monetary system's changing and, you know, they're looking at the, exactly like you said, Jeremy, they're looking at the price of today and it's going up and down and they don't understand the manipulation and the emotions play a huge part of people in their investing and it creates a fear where they actually don't take action until it's too late. Of course, and then there's also the fear of missing out once things are really, really getting on, getting underway. We have so much to talk about. I have lots of questions for you. I know this is going to be uh, be fantastic, but uh, I just want to quickly just, uh, you know, um, your assistant sent over a biography for you, and I saw that you uh. sold a company at the age of 26 to one of the largest publicly traded companies in Canada. Can can you just tell the listeners a little bit about that? Yeah, I, ironically, back then wow. it was a very large uh, video store space, um, but it was it was sold to Rogers Communications. It was actually in a bidding war between Rogers Communications and Blockbuster because they couldn't get the market share. They didn't understand what was being done different. How is this? How is like how is there this much revenue? And um, it was a huge learning process, and um, it really got me on my track, not only business, but uh, it was with investing and looking outside the box and understanding what we need to do to really take charge of our own lives and do what we know feels right versus what everyone else. Because if you understand, that was the height. Nobody was selling at that time. But you always want to get into things long before and out of things long before it's over. <laughs> so I got out long before the party ended. But just like when you look at metals, right, you want to get in long before the party is like at the height. It's the same thing. And so it gives you a lot of background of understanding business and negotiation. And yeah, it was a it was an incredible ride that gave me a lot of skills. That's amazing. And, and I will say I, I do miss Blockbuster. <laughs> I do. That, that It was a lot of fun to, you know, to read the back of the, the DVDs and, you know, walk around and get the get the advice from the guy at the front. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about understanding trends in that sense, right? Getting in 100%. early, getting out. But one of the things that you've talked about and we've talked about is this idea of the people who will be a success in the future are those that can learn and unlearn. Now, this is something that we talk about in so many different ways in, in our market. Um, you know, just unlearning things that you already have been carrying with you for so long. And this is something that you help people with in terms of reprogramming, repatterning, th thinking, pointing out their, their thought processes. What, do, what does that mean to you when, you when you hear that, that it's all about being able to unlearn? It is. And if you, you can look at it in any area of your life. But if you look at it in terms of precious metals, I love this area for this reason. We're taught a certain pattern around investing, which is usually none. We're taught a certain pattern of behavior based on our family, our friends, and we just kind of have to figure it out, right? So we come with this programming, and a lot of times, if you're going to learn something new, you do have to unlearn everything else. Look at precious metals. Look at how people say, it doesn't have a dividend, so I don't want to look at it. But they're not looking at the fundamentals. They're just cutting it off right away. 
that's the body that's afraid to learn something new because they're actually going to get a different result. And every time what happens is the subconscious is programmed to keep you safe. So as soon as you start to expand in another area, you'll go back to your own patterns, your own learning, without even realizing you're kind of functioning on autopilot. So when you start to unlearn all of these bad behaviors, you can look at something like precious metals and say, okay, I'm scared because you will feel scared. It's a new area. My, my regular institution doesn't talk about this to me. It's a new area. And there can be a lot of fear. And a, a lot of people, I know when I spoke to them with precious metals, that's their big thing. They're like, oh, my God, this is so much to learn. So they'll right away kind of shut it down. And because it's a new learning. So it's fear that comes up and then they miss these opportunities or they miss getting in before, like we said, at the top because they're afraid to re- to learn something new. But it's the biggest block no matter what you're doing in your life and especially around finances when people say, I'm, I, I struggle or I'm afraid to learn that, it's because they're afraid that there's something better on the other side so they don't want to learn something new and it creates an actual block. Let, let's stick with this topic because I think it just really does apply with metals. I think that's one of the reasons why we're always saying crawl, walk, run, start very small, yeah. get a, get a, get a, you know, dip a toe in the water and see how it feels so you can um, slowly make those changes. We're talking today with Tracy Clark. She's also a client, but she has a a network of over 100,000 people that she works with in helping them reprogram, repattern their lives, and basically just create better, more success in people's lives and uh, incredible transformations. And and also, um, Tracy, I find what what where you and I really connect is um, when it comes to this idea of energy and just things that are going on. Like we were just talking at the beginning of the show about anxieties are running high, emotions are running high, but there is something energetically to be said about precious metals. And I always love our our conversations because we kind of come at things differently. It's almost like two different languages, but we're saying the same things. So for instance, we'll have people, we always want people to come to the office to hold the product in their hand. Mm-hmm. Which which changes things for people, right, Jerry? Yeah, like you notice that? Yeah, very transformative for sure. Yeah. So, what? How would you interpret that, Tracy? Yeah, it's true because everything is energy. Like if you understand the quantum physics, if you look at look at a you know a wall, it's vibrating, but it's vibrating so fast it's still. And you know, science has has proven that. And when you're looking at precious metals, and I like to do this if I'm teaching or in a class, I'll say, hold this hundred dollar <laughs> bill and hold this. 10 ounce bar of silver and every person who's never touched silver is like oh my god why does this feel safe why does this feel so good why does this feel like i want more of this and it's because it's energy and it's it's what's gone into it it's what the symbol of it is it's actual it is you know a, a money or a store wealth or however they want there's there's something behind that that they can feel so quite often when we're in, you were talking even with Jerry with cryptocurrencies or you're in online banking, look how disconnected you also get from your money. That's why a lot of debt gets spent it's because they're not connecting. They're not feeling it. But when they hold gold or silver, I know the first time I held a silver bar like five years ago or whatever, and I was just learning and I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the energy. I'm like, oh my gosh, there is something behind this. Like, and I started to get even more curious to want to learn because you can, if you feel it. And I always say to people like you said, you know, I've talked about this. I'll say to my clients, go in and feel it because everything is energy. We're always transferring. Just like emotions now, you can walk out of the street having a great day and walk by someone and feel miserable and not know why. You've just exchanged energy. So this is also what's happening. You can see it in the financial system as things are changing. We know we're going to get some sort of change or reset. And we just don't know all what it looks like right now. But again, you can feel that change. So when you hold gold and silver, you can physically feel it. You don't have to say I'm uh, intuitive or whatever. It's not about that. Just as a human being, pick it up. You will feel the power behind it because the energy it takes to get out of the ground the the information that also comes through gold and silver that people don't understand is if you look at the history of gold and silver, how it was used, how it was taken out of the system, how it's that insurance, and why it's so amazing. You feel all that in the product. Look at how much energy it takes to get this out of the ground. And you can feel that, and that's why it's 
so important for people to actually come in. I say, go in the office. I've said that before. Go see Jeremy. Clients around the world are like, where do I go? You know, because they're saying what you say, can't get the product. Am I late to the party? Have I missed out? And I'm like, just go talk to those people. They get it. They'll help you and go feel it. Well, it, let's it changes. Let, let's talk about uh, uh, the, the the missing out part. What I. My, my mind's jumping because on the one hand, the, the thing about having it in your hand is all of a sudden, and you and I have talked about this, this idea that all of a sudden your money, you are now accountable for it because it's, it's physically in your hand versus, yes. versus on a computer screen with an advisor, um, mm-hmm. you know, out there in the ether. When, when you're holding that physical gold or physical silver, it is now your responsibility and mm-hmm. that that does create a shift in someone's mind to say, yeah, you know what? I've been handing over this power forever. Yeah. I mean, Jerry, you must see it. You see people who start with an ounce here. Next thing you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're doing more, right? Oh, yeah. They're gaining this independence. And that's the unique thing about gold and silver is it offers. And this is part, partly the reason why central banks need to hold physical gold in their possession, in their vaults, is that it offers one, two things, global liquidity, and it offers the independence from all of the madness that we read about, all of the negative realities, such as this money printing phenomenon, the, 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 the manipulation of the interest rates, um, the geopolitical, political risks. All you're doing, as you slowly accumulate your precious metals, you get this sense of, of peace, that comes with yeah. this portion of your life, which is your finances. Yeah, and I always believe in sort of the sleep at night rule. Yeah. You know, if you're not yeah. sleeping at night because you're worried about your, your portfolio, you probably need more precious metals. And if you're up all night thinking about what the precious metals are going to do tomorrow, you probably have to have too much. Um, Tracy, what this idea of missing out, I, I find actually yeah. the last couple of days we've come across a few people who've called in and said, you know, I wish I would have done this a year ago. I had friends who said, ah, you've already missed it. It's already gone up. Or now they're looking at the market again and, and you know, they want to learn about it. But again, there's all, what is this thing where people have this, I've already missed, I've already missed it. I'm making the excuse now. That's it. Yeah, actually you said it well, accountability. And I see that a lot when I'm training people to understand why they need to step up with their finances and understand where the blocks are. That's the number one thing, accountability. And when you hold gold and silver, whether it's in the vault or you have it at home, you are now accountable for that. There's no person, you know, saying, oh, you can't take your money out now, which we see more of that happening. Or You are fully accountable. That scares people huge. They don't want to be accountable. So when they say they're missing out, it goes back to the accountability factor. So they'll find excuses. They'll say, I've missed out. It's so expensive now. Like someone said that to me the other day. And on the flip side, I had another lady who, when you were working with her, she's like, oh, my God, I can sleep at night. I'm so glad I did that. Who works in the bank, right? And she didn't know anything about this. She knew nothing about it. She goes, why didn't they teach me? But she's like, that was the key. She goes, I don't feel like I've missed out. I feel like now I have more empowerment and accountability for my money rather than just handing it off. Because when you hand your money off, most people do not understand what they're buying They don't understand the stocks. They don't understand diversification, but they like it that way because your arm's length and then it allows this system to continue to go the way it's going. So when you all of a sudden introduce, you know, gold and silver, that's the fear. They're like accountable. Oh, no, I've missed out. I don't want to. So when they say they've missed out or it's too expensive, they're actually afraid to move to being accountable for their money and look further. And if they did that, they would start to realize the importance of having this in and in their portfolios. And they would also understand energetically how now they become empowered over their money because they're making the decisions and that's why they're afraid. And that's an excuse. It is an excuse. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I mean, we see it every day and, and where someone buys product outright and then they might do an RSP and then lo and behold, there's a spousal RSP or a Lira or a TFSA somewhere. And they're, they're just, they, I think they get excited about, about that clear ownership, that direct ownership of that product that, Mm -hmm. um, that, that they no longer have the power of someone else taking care of it magically. Um, what, what percentage of people, you know, when people come to you, what percentage 
of what they're trying to transform or, you know, work on, it has to do with finance. I mean, I'm sure it's all interconnected, oh. but, yeah. you know, uh, does someone come and say, look, like I'm trying to get out of a bad relationship, but then how quickly would it go from bad relationship to, well, let's talk about your wallet? Oh, a hundred, you know what? It's almost a hundred percent. They might come with, okay, it's a relationship or it's a health issue or, you know, how am I going to take charge of my life? But a hundred percent, they're all, I want better finances. I want to understand. I've had no education and I'm saying I'm not. I'm here to help them understand their block, so they can go to people like you and not be afraid to get the education, or go and talk to their brokers and not be afraid to ask these questions. Because when they got empowered, I had recently, and I know they reached out this week to Guildhall, is where they said, "Oh my God, I talked to my broker. I feel empowered. Now I'm going to be calling Jeremy." So this is the transformation that happens, and a hundred percent because. Let's face it, what are people's biggest fear? The biggest fear, if you talk to <clears> most people, that they're going to lose all their money. It's going to be 1929. They have nothing, and they're just going to be jumping out of the windows. I hear this every day, every day from people. That's what they're afraid of, and they're, they're afraid because they can't navigate what we're walking through right now because it's, it's unprecedented. What's the, I- happening is unprecedented. Yeah, the irony is as well, there's a lot of people that are very freewheeling with money that they've worked so hard for, I find sometimes. Um, yeah. So, it, it, you know, our relation, generally speaking, our relationship with money is a very interesting thing. I think, you know, again, coming back to this theme of learning and unlearning, yeah. you know, unlearning all of these things we've been told by the banks about... <laughs> Yeah. For I mean, for example, very quickly before we go to break, I mean, low, in, uh, high interest savings accounts, right? I mean, it it couldn't be more obvious that there's no interest in these <laughs> savings accounts. Um, yeah. But we have to unlearn this idea that uh, you know you can't put your money in the bank and get something for it, and putting it in there is no longer a safe quote unquote safe place if you're yep. losing money to inflation right away. So, um, you know, these are all certain things that, that uh, people need to continue to unlearn and discuss. Jerry, we've been talking about reprogramming. The whole idea of coming back to something that is ancient. Mm-hmm. Gold and silver have been around for thousands of years, and yet somehow people are convinced the best way to have it is on paper. Right. Um, you know, you must run into people all the time who are like, no, I'm, I'm good. I've got certificates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unlearning the idea of certificate and paper and what is value and what is not value. Um, Aristotle had that definition of what money is and what money is not. And the fifth at, uh, characteristic was scarce, scarcity. Um, you, you know, currency needs to be scarce in order to be called money and this is why we believe at Guildhall that gold and silver are money because gold and silver are intrinsic it it goes back a long way it has a millennial record of as a store of value because of its importance today it's more than just a precious metal it's a strategic metal according to the silver institute oh definitely on silver for sure you know it's uh, scarcity being one of the fundamentals for money is definitely a big part of it for me, it, it's about the store of value, right? It's that, it's that you can put your money into this, into this asset and it stores value. This is why it beats inflation, why it's up you know, on average 11% a year for the last 20 years. Um, and you know, you're not paying uh, interest on it. You're not paying um, a mortgage for it and, and all of those things. You're not paying lawyers for it. So um, at the end of the day, it's quite easy to own it, right? And if you're getting, if you're getting you know, less than 1% in a bank and losing to inflation, but it costs you 1% to store physical bullion, but the average is 11% a year, I think you can see that on the longer term, you're, you're doing what, it's doing what it needs to do, which is beat inflation and increase your purchasing power. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about uh, diversity. Uh, let's talk about, you, Jerry, you were just saying scarcity, right? The yeah. idea of money is, is money if it's scarce. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously the fiat money is not scarce because the government is creating it like crazy. Um, but this does play into to things that uh, you discussed, Tracy, which is the idea of lack and abundance. We have yeah. an abundance of fake money, 
but we have a we have a lack of knowledge about it. Yeah, we do. And you know, to put it in perspective too, because when people look at lack, abundance, scarcity, it, it's all programming. It's stuff you see from the outside world. Look at media, fear, fear, fear. You know, you don't really see people talking like lately now everyone's talking about metals because you know some of these guys got into metals right the big guys and there's been all the manipulation and i kind of like to put it this way too for people to understand if you have lack and you have scarcity you can see again where there the metals are short i don't i know i told you a few times like let's let's buy and you're like gotta wait <laughs> you know and um but i'm okay with that because i know there's there's new things changing in education and one thing i like to say to people and a lot of people don't know this but being born really sick and having three near-death experiences, the experts told me I was done. I'm supposed to be dead now. That was like, you know, quite a long time ago. I'm not dead. But what happened is I had to take accountability for my life, my health, and my programming. And that included the finances. Had a lot of money, found creative ways to get rid of it. And people say, well, what about, why did that happen? It was the programming, the scarcity, the lack, what I heard from my parents, what I heard from other experts in the field, so to speak. And this applies when you look at your money and you look at if you're running lack or scarcity or the fear that you've missed out on precious meadows, it's, it's purely because they're not looking at the programming and they're not taking the information, right, that you've been applying or that you're teaching them. They're not listening because they're so afraid. A lack, a lack issue in a body is a lack mindset. It's a lack belief system and it's just programming. So if your parents run around saying metals are crazy, you don't need that, or, you know, everything is, is uh, scared and I'm worried about money and how are we going to pay the bills, don't kid yourself. That's playing somewhere in the background. And that's why when you look at precious metals, it, it's, what is it? It's, I always say it's great insurance. I love them. <laughs> but it's like I go to bed because I learned that. But diff, no different than I had to repair my body when everyone told me I was going to die again. I took that in same patterning into finances, and I see this with so many people. They have lack because they're afraid to learn something different. They're yeah, I, yeah. I think that you know one of the one of the things that we hear a lot of uh, here, Jerry, is that uh, they just didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. They would have probably moved up, moved some of their RSP or whatever portfolio over if they'd known that they could have done this. And maybe they spoke to their advisor and the advisor said, well, we can't offer it. Mm -hmm. and that's what happened to me personally years ago when I attempted to diversify my portfolio. I had looked at my RSPs and I wanted to get some gold. And I was immediately shot down. I was, I was told, why would you want to do that? It offers no yield. It was literally the dumbest thing that I can p potentially do. And as a young person, as soon as you, t I mean, that's for me today. If you tell me not to do something, I'm going there. Yes, <laughs> that, that's, that's yeah, very they true. Put fear. They put fear oh, into you, right? Like they're so like, much. why would you do that? And then they tell you you're dumb. Why are you looking at that? Then what happens? All the fear comes up. And if you go, oh, maybe I should look at gold and silver, because now they're terrified that you just stepped out of the masses, right? You're saying, well, show me something different. But I say to people, that's where the opportunity is. The opportunity isn't where the masses are going. The opportunity is exactly what we're talking about today, looking out of the box and going, wow, I need to know more about that. You have insurance for your house. You have insurance on your car. Why, why aren't these advisors talking about insurance for your wealth? Yeah, and, and Jerry, you talk about it, the fiduciary responsibility. Yeah, they do have, I mean, this, this is a huge responsibility, especially if you want to look into getting wealth insurance. I always use that analogy. If you want life insurance or car insurance, you don't buy a share of, let's say, Sun Life Insurance. You go out and buy the full policy without compromising any of the, you know, any of the fire or the theft. You want to get the best. So therefore... Since gold is our wealth insurance, we can't buy the certificate. We can't go with the ETF. Unless you're just interested in just tracking the price, that's fair. But if you really want that true wealth insurance, you need to get that physical because when you own it, when you can hold it, you own it. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Tracy, this idea of um, control, right? Uh, it's like the fear of losing a client. I have to control them. The fear of 
losing a boyfriend girlfriend I, now I have to try to control you um, it's it's almost a knee-jerk reaction you hear it every day the, from it you know from advisors or or the friends right oh you've already missed the boat those people what what it, in your opinion what is this what is this compulsion to try to control other people uh, from making their own decisions <laughs> Well, it's huge because people are controlling people all the time and look at what the media is doing right now. It's always to control, to sway you to a certain point of view by fear because they're afraid. It's at some point when people get really controlling, they're afraid they're going to lose something. So you said it well, the client, right? Like, oh, I'm going to lose my client rather than there's an abundance of clients. There's so many clients because the reality is they've already been created. If you want a million dollars, you can create it, but your your mental space isn't there, your energy isn't there. So people who get into the control and look at, we look at society, look what the, the system we are now in, it's huge amount of control. It's, I went to the bank the other day and I was only allowed so much money. Well, I'm like, when did that change, right? So this is all about people that have a different outcome that they would like from you, not what's in your best interest. So again, if the control, people will go into fear, they'll follow what they say, because they don't want to look at, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what if I buy gold and silver? And what if the price goes down? Well, what if the stock market goes down? And what if this happens? Like anything's a what if, but if they really took the time to understand this is the best thing I love about gold and silver. I see it with so many people in my community. Once they learn why they're holding it, once they relearn and unlearn that it's just their version of diversification is not diversified. And I know you and I have had this conversation a lot. And when they get this, they're like, they can't control me anymore. I get to be in charge. And our society has been built around control because it's built around fear that somebody is going to lose something. And if you look right now the world is waking up saying we don't want to be controlled anymore we want to have some power and that's where gold and silver really brings internal emotional power back when people are holding it and they sleep at night like you said control's a big one with people and that's why tracy we were just talking and you mentioned you walked into a bank and they they didn't have money for you what was this yeah, it was like, we don't have many 50s or 100s, so you'd have to make an order. Well, I wasn't asking for tens of thousands of dollars. And they're like, could you come back next week? I'm like, next what? week? Yeah, when did that change? And I hear this, I, I had a call with multiple people the other day, and they're all telling me the same thing. And I'm like, my radar went up, because I was like, that's kind of my daily ATM limit. Like, why do I have to come back next week? Yeah. So, so where, how do you feel this is this is headed with the the financial system? I mean, clearly, anyone can walk into a bank and see what's happening, and and I think people who do get into precious metals start really opening their eyes, and and they they can start to see things a bit different, and th because they are accountable now for their own money. Um, yeah. How are you feeling about this financial system? You know, I'm looking at a chart right now. I'm not sure if you got our newsletter last week, and it's. Mm -hmm. The amount of money the Canadian bank, the Bank of Canada produced was 456% year over year. And the, the nearest central bank was only like a 100% increase year over year. So that's an incredible amount of money. The government doesn't produce wealth. They can create money. They can't create wealth. And now we have this much more money chasing after all the wealth, which clearly is going to be inflationary. But this can't go on. I mean, you are tapped oh. into energy. How? What does this say to you? Yeah, I see, feel, and hear. And I thought that was the weirdest thing years ago. And now I step in. It. It's actually, to me, it's, I say to people, you have to understand this cannot sustain. This is going to change. This is... What I see in Canada really scares me because I'm like, wow, people wake up. You can't just print money. It's got to come back, which means the systems will end up changing. It's, it's going to shift how long, you know, it's anyone's guess. But if you're just going to sit there and say, okay, I'll just leave all my, you know, money in the bank. I'm not going to do a first fire take off. You're going to get caught. You can see it energy. A lot of people are going to get caught around the world because they're moving. Look at the, look at what the IMF doing and the, you know, I don't know if 
don't want to get into all that, but the digital sure. policies they want to do and the banking systems and how every Canada, Canada, the head of the Canadian um, bank said the other day, what did he say last week? They want to get start to melt down cash and they want to start to get in their own, you know, Canadian central digital bank. And what is that currency? So what does that look like? So you, this is going to move. This is going to change. Personally, I, I don't want to just hold a Canadian digital bank currency and that's it because that opens another can of worms. They can shut it down. They can tell you how to spend it. They can say, if you haven't spent it by this time, we're going to take it out. Like People have to really take some time and really get right with their money and really understand why gold and silver right now is so important because these changes aren't going to happen. They're already happening. So when I look at it energetically, you can see like it's like a 180. Like it's going to just pour out in a whole new direction. So just to back up, Tracy, you did mention that you went to the bank and you've also you were told that you had a limit and you had to come back in a week and other people were experiencing that as well. That's capital controls. Yeah, in my community, I, I, we had a huge call on Zoom. We were talking about some other things. And they had shared multiple stories. One lady, she said, I used to take out $2,500 every Friday because she's renovating a home in Toronto. She said, now I'm only allowed 15 they told me. But she uses that to pay people. She documents it, whatever. So they told her, only 1500 now. Mm-hmm. She can only come take that out. But it's her money there. So think about that. Like People have to think about this. It's huge. And I'm hearing this every day from my clients and not just in Canada. I have a guy in um, in Europe. He went to the bank. You know what they told him he was allowed? $175. He had never experienced this till I started to tell him, take a peek. He had to go in. He had to renegotiate with the bank. He's like, I was shocked that that's all they would let me take out. Wow. Again, this goes back to control. Right. And if you own the precious metal, you're you're not being controlled. And what what's interesting about the metals as well in that sense is it's a very liquid. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's very, very liquid. And that's um, partly the reason why higher net worth individual clients need to um, are attracted to precious metals because it offers that immediate liquidity that you may need. Um, Just coming back to being late to the party for precious metals. There is a flip side to this late to the party in potentially getting out of the banking system, getting out of the financial system, getting out of those risks and into the precious metals that we need so dearly today. So, yeah, I just want to encourage our listeners to heed this. Um, I mean, we we don't like to fear monger very much. Uh, we see the topside potential in precious metals, which is the exciting part. Um, but as, as as well, we just have to remember that this is insurance, right? Right. So, I think uh, I think we should start to end on the positive notes because um, we have talked about some negative things here. Uh, but Tracy, let's let's keep it let's keep it light. Let's keep it light. So uh, you know, if one we have about a minute left. Um, w- what do you have to say that that keeps it light? The positive note that I love people to understand is that if they actually start to take accountability and they're w- willing to learn something new, what I can see as this changes. And energy can change. Lots of things can change. I say it's like a bad divorce. We're going to get through it. But you can see on the other side, it's actually going to be better than when we started with the pandemic. It will be better. It's just going to be timing. But people need to wake up and start doing things like understand gold and silver, why they need to have it. And that's where you can see there's going to be a lot of people that will ride through it really well if they have that in their portfolio. And I think that's why we're also pretty busy here and we're going to keep being busy, but you are going to come back to the show, right? Yes. Oh, anytime. I, <laughs> I, love, I love people to understand how empowered they can be and not to be in fear of what they're seeing out there. Like I said, all the people that I know you have handled them so well at Guildhall, you guys have been amazing and I hear the feedback. And if anyone is worried, you don't have to be. If you put this in, you're going to ride through it and... It's gonna. I would say it's like the glory train. The good times are coming back. They really and, are. And very quickly, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, TracyLClark.com or contact at TracyLClark.com. I have an incredible team that can always help in every sense. We're in a mass rebranding. We've been exploding so much. So 